This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. Hey, this is Derek J. Okay, now I can hear you well and uh, no crash. Great. Okay, sorry for all the delays. That's okay. I'm glad we got a high quality recording. You there, Steven? Hey, Dave, I'm here. Hey, good to talk to you again. It's probably been a year, hasn't it? Yeah, since that NH exit event in Concord or Manchester. Yeah, still, appreciate, still appreciate you going. Well, I am recording, and I've uh, I've got um, I've got two interesting New Hampshire activists on the phone here: Derek J. Freeman, formerly Derek Horton, and Stephen Zeiler. Am I saying your last name correctly? Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so I have. I've heard that one or both of you are involved in or planning on going to this uh, New Hampshire expedition to Catalonia. Is that correct? Yeah, I can't wait. You know, I got two Catalonia flags at the Free State Bitcoin shop right now. Aprendas alguns catalans? Of course, you, of course, you don't yet. No, I was asking. Uh, uh, I was asking, will you learn some Catalan? And I was asking you in Catalan. Por supuesto. Uh, it, 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 similar uh, de español, pienso. <laughs> well, terrifying. That it is. It's the real Spanish. Terrifyingly similar, actually. It reminds me of uh, the relationship between Slovenian and Serbian. Well, I can't wait for the trip. I plan to learn a lot about their culture and how they were successful in their independence movement and what I can learn and emulate here in the Shire. Well, when I looked on, on Google Translate, you know, I thought, well, there's not going to be a listing for Catalans here, that, uh, or Catalan, or I guess it would be the, the English way of referring to it. But sure enough, Google Translate already lists the Catalonian language or Catalans or whatever you want to call it, and it translated it for me and it it read it, you know, it pronounced it for me and everything. It it does seem real similar to Spanish, but who would ever have known, you know, until they until they declared independence that they even had a language? Well, it, it is Spanish, and I'm pretty sure the formal the formal Spanish that you learn in uh, textbooks is really Catalan, and um, but what the Spanish that is spoken in America is not Catalan. It's uh, less formal and um, different. Yeah, probably less sophisticated. Okay. Uh, so th this is in early January, is that correct? Yeah, I, I believe it is in mid-January. I don't know the dates. But I and what's go. the status... What's the status of the numbers of people who are planning on going at this point from New Hampshire? Gosh, I really don't know. I'll I'll be going whether it's just three people or three hundred. Yeah. What's what's the uh, what's the precise purpose of the visit? the The main purpose of my visit is I want to learn about the culture and meet people who participated in the freedom movement there, connect with them and learn how they were successful, what they did and what they thought was not successful, what was a waste of time for them, um, because they sort of had a trial run of something that I'd like to see happen here in New Hampshire, which is independence. What do you mean by that? But what do you mean by trial run? Well, they went through the old style of uh, begging permission from their masters to be free and exhausted all of the um, stages or the steps that they're quote unquote supposed to um, before being n naughty little slaves and just declaring independence anyway. Um, they, they went through all of those stages. I want to know, is that something that they found worthwhile? Uh, did they get support from the people because they... Um, went through those steps first, or is it something that was completely unnecessary or maybe counterproductive for them? 
do, will will anything change your plans to go? I mean, if uh, fighting breaks out, or uh, you know, the State Department says you can't go, or something like that, what, what what could stop you from going, and what can't stop you? Well, I I wouldn't want to go there if there was a lot of fighting going on. I don't. I I imagine it's pretty peaceful there right now, and if there are you know, roadblocks, like they say, we can't go. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, to fight my way in. I'm visiting a newly founded country. And, you know, I want to be a tourist there, just like a regular tourist. Yeah, it, it reminds me of, I, I, w- I was in uh, Mostar during, or right, I guess you could you might call it during the first siege or maybe after the first siege. It was, a, I guess it was a partial siege by the time I got there in 1992. This is in southwestern Bosnia or better known as western Herzegovina. And yes, I was the only tourist. I was the only tourist in the town. You know, like they, were, they really were selling things. I bought some postcards for like $2 each. No one, they, everything was really expensive. And <laughs> so... So I'm hoping that uh, hoping your experience is a little bit a little bit less expensive than mine was. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty normal. This culture is well established. They already have tourism. It's going to be the same as it ever was, but new flags. Have you gotten a sense that tourism is dramatically down or up or anything like that? No, I have no idea. I don't follow uh, Catalonia tourism too closely. All I know is that someone posted online saying, hey, we should go there as uh, NH Exit Group or New Hampshire Independence. And I thought that was a great idea. I want to be connected with the other NH Independence people and have sort of like a, a sister outpost, you know, so that I know the people in uh, the freedom movement in Catalonia. And make connections Who, who's who's uh leading the expedition i don't know that anyone's in charge it, it, was it neil connor's idea yeah yeah okay so he he he's what passes for a leader at this point maybe <laughs> i guess you could say or am i even is that going too far to even say that i don't even know i mean really uh, I think I heard about it from a post by New Hampshire Independence on Facebook. So I don't know okay, if there that... was even a person attached to that. Yeah, I think mean, that's what I heard, too. You know, uh, leader or not, I think it would be fun to go with a group of people who all love freedom and want to learn how to be more free. How will your event or your your visit be uh, documented, especially when it comes to video? Well, I I plan to do video recording as we walk through the streets. If I meet anyone of particular interest, I would love to do a sit-down interview with them in a cafe or wherever we're um, spending time. And I plan to upload those videos as I normally do to my YouTube channel. I'm posting them to Facebook. Here is a request or a suggestion. Uh, one thing that most people do or rather fail to do when they're filming something is that they think what is in front of them is one thing when in fact it is dozens of things. So for instance, what will generally happen, and you probably do this, I haven't noticed you doing it any worse than anyone else, but what generally happens is that uh, a person who doesn't shoot video for a living will walk up to a scene, turn on their camera, and film the scene. And it winds up being one shot, or generally lasting a minute or two, of the same thing. Uh, but what's really useful is to, to look at a scene and pick out all the different little shots that are inside it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, my request would be, if you're going to do that, your video is going to become pretty important, and I would recommend getting a lot of close-ups, if that makes sense. Well, I expect you'll be doing that. You're coming with us, right? Oh, no, I'm not planning to. I don't really travel much. Why not? I don't like it. I'm disappointed. Yeah, you probably should be, and maybe I deserve that. But that's what I learned. (laughs) That's what I learned when I was in the Balkans, is that I loved the Balkans, but I hated traveling.
You guys still there? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, what else was I going to ask? Uh, ask about our shop. Yes, I will. I wanted to exhaust Catalonia first because uh, I'll probably make the shop into a, sec- a separate video. But um, can you guys think of anything else that I haven't asked you about with relation to Catalonia that may be interesting? Mm. Well, there are lots of questions I can think of, but I don't know the answers to them. Like, where are we staying? Or, you know, is there, um, what, like, what am I bringing? Uh, I don't know those the answers to those things yet. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, I guess I haven't think of another question, actually. What, what, are your, what is your level of concern with regard to the fact that I have, I have listened to sort of, there's, there's a, na- there is a, I guess a, naysayer or debunker uh, voice inside the liberty movement, uh, which is sort of against Catalan independence. And one of the criticisms is that uh, Cat- Catalonia is actually more socialist than the rest of Spain and that um, they haven't really followed the process as closely as they should have, uh, that they may, be, may, may in fact be in violation of the process. So what? I don't know what process there is. Like, I'm pretty sure you can't impose a process on a group of people and say that this is the way that you must determine your own government. That's that's ridiculous. That that violates all all forms of self determinism, self determination. So I, you know, maybe it's not good that they are declaring independence, but it is. They, it's right for them to do so if they want to. You know, like you know, maybe maybe the government might be worse in Catalan in Catalonia once once this is all over. Um, but then again, maybe not. And I think it's it's up to them to decide. Really, um, I don't like this because it's a they're creating another government, which is kind of um, boring to me. Uh, like I'm not sure how effective that is going is in in uh, getting real independence for people um, on an individual level. But maybe it's part of the whole um, grand plan and there, there are other economic forms of ind- independence that they're going after as well. You know, I have to admit that I've asked this question, you know, as it's a devil as advocate question. I think I could have, you know, I, I feel, I feel, I see the, my own holes that I could poke in it. But what seems to, what's really struck me is the extent to which but it's like it's like with martin luther king right we can't we don't all necessarily agree with every single piece of martin luther king's agenda but his means were generally so good that it's like russell canning used to say that the the means justify the ends but the ends (laughs) don't justify the means right so the catalans have been like i have never seen such a textbook case of an like an entire nation um, carefully and peaceably uh, resisting rule by outside. It's like it's like seeing India in 1930 all over again in a way. Yeah, they hit such a home run with their peaceful resistance. Um, there was a lot of uh, sympathy and empathy that people were feeling when they were watching on tv i know i did Um, when i saw the videos of these people being beaten and not resisting i was like wow okay one of these people is clearly in the wrong and who cares if the other one's a socialist and and wants a more socialist government at least it's smaller and some would argue that families are organized a a bit socialist so like if it's going to be a a smaller government and it's more self-deterministic um and it happens to be socialist, well, you know, I, I can live with that outcome. Yeah, one one step at a time. Like, first first make rule controlled by people around you rather than people far away from you. Get rid of the uh, remotely imposed socialism and then work on improving the, the local problems. Yeah, and besides, it sets a good precedent for others. If other parts of the country want to break off and become independent and they're more... Um, capitalist 
I could see Vermont and New Hampshire seceding from the U.S. in very different ways and having um, very different forms of government, um, but they should both have the right to do it. The other thing that really stood out to me was just a number, and I don't remember exactly what the number was, but it, it's, the, it's the, uh, the, the, the gross domestic product of Catalonia compared to the other parts of Spain and how much more successful that part of Spain is. So you can, you can call it socialist all you want, but if it's richer, they're doing something right. <laughs> Fair point. With regard to, you had mentioned the other parts of Spain, one thing that has kind of su surprised me is that I have not seen a word, not word one, about the, the Basque territories or Basque territories uh, since this started. And I'm surprised that this hasn't created uh, a different a renewal of the secession movement there. I think maybe because the um, the people in Barcelona are much more glamorous and important in the world. And um, the people in Bais Basco are um, more of an afterthought and um, I guess l less pivotal to really to Spain and less influential on the culture in general around the world um you know catalonia catalan is way more important really economically culturally it is more spain than um bosco is spain okay you you seem really knowledgeable about the area i i spent a long time studying spain and um spanish history spanish literature spanish language um i grew up in texas and so Spanish culture was very, very important there. Um, Texas flies six flags. One of them is this the flag of Spain. Okay. All right. Okay, so have we exhausted Catalonia? Yeah. All right. Good. Well, the one last awesome. thing, there was a, a cool libertarian guy that came into the Free State Bitcoin shop the other day and saw the Catalan flag and loved it. <laughs> nice. Well, it's nice that it's recognizable. I mean, if you think about it, even the Estonian and the Slovenian flags, I can't tell you what either of those look like. And, and those are almost within my area of expertise. So the fact that the Catalan flag would be recognized by someone just walking into your shop is, is an indication they've gotten a lot of traction. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on to well, yeah. Speaking of the shop, uh, I had a couple questions written down about that. Um, I was wondering. I don't think anyone has asked yet. What, what if any types of inter interactions have you had or had to have uh, with the authorities as part of having the shop? Well, um, I wouldn't say that there are authorities that have authority at the shop rather than of course the land the landlord and ourselves as the owners of the shop we are the authorities so um as far as people who call themselves government we haven't had any interaction with them and i think probably because of the no gov bipcot license on the front door they really are not welcome and so they, they don't want to come by you, th you think that the sticker is actually deterring them from coming in as opposed to making it more likely that they'll be coming in? No, everything about it says to them, this is not for you. Just just leave us alone. Stay away. Well, yeah, people say that all the time, and that, that tends to draw the government as opposed to push them away. No, it's it's too icky for them. They, they don't. The energy there is so free and happy that they, they don't want to come by. They would. Well, they I'll, can't I'll, even wrap I'll, their heads around what what is going on. They'd rather just stay away. I'll try to make help make it as icky for them as possible if they ever bother you. But I think eventually you'll have to interact with them in some form or fashion. Well, so so far so good. You know, we haven't we haven't been asking for permission to do anything and um, just granting ourselves permission, and it's worked out so far. We have a good contract with our landlord, and and that's the law that I recognize. Do you have a uh, protocol or infrastructure or plan for how you will react if and when the government tries to stop you from doing business there? 
Well, I, I don't know. We're selling t-shirts. I can't imagine they'd try to stop us. Been done. Um, contingency plan, you know, I guess we will let people know what's going on and we will, we have video cameras, we have audio recording, we have everything in place to make sure that any kind of interaction is on record and can immediately be broadcast out to to all appropriate parties. And so, you know, I'm ready, you know. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM Feds don't want you to hear them.